Good afternoon from the European Parliament in Strasbourg. We are here with uh, Guy Verhofstadt. He's the co-chair of the Conference of the Future on Europe. And we're here, we discuss with him, and I want to thank him a lot for taking his time to speak with us. Thank you, Mr. Verhofstadt. First of all, why are we here today? What's going on today in the European Parliament in Strasbourg? Uh, it's, in fact, the second uh, plenary of the Conference on the Future of Europe. Uh, and the plenary is uh, the gathering of all the representatives of the citizens of the European Parliament, uh, national parliaments, commission and council. So in total, more than 400 uh, representatives, including citizens, uh, who will decide on the, on the, uh, yeah, the future direction of the uh, European uh, Union in the coming uh, in the coming months. Mm. Today, uh, especially organized in different working groups by mm. different topics. Are you yourself in any of them? Yeah, or? yeah I'm in the education, culture, youth uh, uh, working group. What is, uh, in fact, the most promising working group because it's about the future. We, we are talking about uh, education, culture, uh, what to do in sports also, what to do on, uh, in, in youth. Uh, in fact, it are all uh, uh, items that are normally not uh, discussed in, uh, in, in, in European politics eh? because uh, education, culture is, uh, uh, yeah, by, is, member states, is by member states and that continues to be by member states. But uh, we all say and we all have the opinion that uh, there is some common uh, civilization, so uh, a common culture in, uh, uh, in, in, in Europe and, and uh, that we need to use that more as the basis for our action. So we are talking about internal market and we are talking about our geopolitical uh, interest and, uh, and so on and so on. But we are not talking enough, I think, about uh, the common uh, culture and the common heritage we have, cultural heritage we have. So it's very important that we have the members of the European Parliament and members of the different national parties also participating. But most important, we want to hear the real citizens. Yep. And they have a voice here too with the citizens panels. Yep. How does it work exactly, more or less? Well, um, the, the, the citizens panels are uh, panels of 200 uh, randomly selected uh, citizens. Uh, one third of them are younger than, uh, than, than 25 years old. And, and they discuss uh, together uh, the recommendations that they want to make on, on the different topics of, of Europe. Uh, and these uh, proposals and recommendations uh, are entering then in this plenary here. And uh, they will be discussed. So what, what uh, the, the plenary has to do is to respond to the request of the citizens. And citizens will be participating in this exercise. So it's not a listening exercise. It's not what we do uh, normally with the Eurobarometer or with the citizens' dialogues or with uh, any other survey. Uh, we are uh, conducting in, in Europe, uh, what we do here is an active participation of citizens in the decision-making process. It's for the first time we do that. It's for the first time we do that certainly on a transnational, on a pan-European level, because such uh, citizens' uh, uh, conventions or panels exist already in countries like Ireland and, and, and France and so on. But for the first time we do that and organize that on a pan-European and a transnational uh, level. Uh, and and um, it, it's uh, uh, again, it's not a passive uh, listening exercise. Uh, so uh, uh, it's it's the active participation of citizens in the decision making process. And yeah, after the first citizens panel, it was already after the first citizens panel, there were some citizens who were asking that it would be a permanent system that every five years of every two and a half years, there would be an exercise exercise like this. Mm -hmm. You initiated the conference on the future of Europe at least five years ago or more. How do you feel now that finally after the, well, let's say end of the pandemic or we're almost mm. through it, that now is finally taking place? How do you feel yourself no, no, personally? I'm, I'm pleased that, that it is happening yeah, because we were talking about this uh, for, uh, but naturally the success of this uh, conference uh, will not be determined today uh, by, by yeah, how many people know it, how many people talk about it, how many people even participate to it, because there is also the possibility on the digital platform of the conference to participate individually and to give mm -hmm. uh, your own opinion about uh, what is happening here. Uh, the, I think that the success will depend a lot of, about the outcome, uh, in, in, in what way uh, the conclusions of this conference will change uh, the uh, 
uh, the policies and the institutions inside uh, the European Union. Because it's clear that the European Union of today is not fit for purpose, it's not ready. It's not for, updated uh, also, not it's updated been a while. It's for the 21st century. The fact, for example, that we still decide our foreign policy, to give only one example with mm -hmm. unanimity, makes that uh, yeah, we are not capable to, to react immediately to what is happening in, 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 in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, uh, the whole question uh, about um, yeah, uh, the fact that we still not have one leadership in the European Union. Eh? We have a president of the parliament, president of the mm -hmm. commission, president of the council. That leads to yeah, uh, problems like Sofagate. Everybody remember, mm -hmm. uh, remember that uh, incident. Uh, so we need to, 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 to solve that. So there are many uh, of, of these questions that need to be tackled. And uh, we hope that with the active participation of citizens, we can gone, come further in our, uh, in, in our proposals, in the boldness of our proposals, than we, we did until now. Mm -hmm. We are actually saying that citizens, some of them have been selected to participate physically here, yeah. but there are other ways, as you mentioned, that citizens mm -hmm. themselves, any one of you watching us at home, can really participate going to the website of the Conference on the Future of Europe and also in our own Renew Europe website that we have. We created one specific uh, table, we're going to have discussion tables ready in 25 member states and you can be there. You just have to go to our website, which is linked in the, in the live uh, session that we're having and you can participate. So you're not late. We still have a lot of months to go with yeah, the yeah. conference in the future of Europe. And, and every uh, uh, proposal that is put on these, uh, on these platforms uh, will be taken into account. Uh, so there is a whole system behind uh, uh, to uh, put together all these ideas and, and, and to put them then as proposals into the conference or into a citizens panel uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, organized. So e uh, even an individual opinion uh, can go through, uh, uh, through the conference and, and, and be on the table of our discussions. Mm -hmm. It's very important obviously that everyone here and you are home take care of the conference and participate because there are so many things Europe is going through. Climate change, we're still recovering from the COVID-19 economically, we have some uh, the issues to discuss on migration, on, on defense, and it's very important. Which are for you the main topics that should be oh, definitely addressed very about long all list. of them? No, <laughs> I have a very long list. It's always difficult to make a selection about that. But certainly uh, unanimity rule, what is blocking a lot of things in Europe, will be an issue. Um, I, I think also um, yeah, how uh, in, in, in the future to, to uh, the, 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 the possibility to uh, repeat what we do now uh, in our reaction to COVID. Uh, so that is this mm -hmm. new generation fund. Uh, for the first time we collect money with a, a type of euro bonds uh, to finance the recovery of Europe to emerge from the COVID crisis. We didn't do that in the financial crisis, we do it mm -hmm. now. But the question is, will it be permanent? Uh, will we do that in the future? Uh, and third, uh, if I can give three, uh, yeah, is please. certainly um, European defense, European army, um, how we were hum humiliated again by, by the Americans uh, when they left out of Afghanistan without really uh, discussing it with, uh, with us. So they call the shots and, and, and we are simply following. Uh, yeah, there comes a day that the, and the American interest and the European interest will be different. Uh, so what we do then? Um, so the fact uh, that we need to have... Uh, yeah, European defense community, European army will be one of the key uh, uh, issues to discuss during the conference. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as you said, all these ideas, all these proposals, they will put be together. What about the treaties as such? Because as you said, we need to update it. Yeah. Europe at the moment is not fit. Oh. Uh, there was nothing on digital in the latest treaties. Is it maybe the time to yeah. go further and put all this into something We didn't uh, more? Uh, talk about treaties, uh, but it's not excluded to change treaties because, you know, we are in politics, so mm -hmm. when you don't forbid something, it's, uh, it's allowed. Huh? So, exactly. Uh, and that it is, could become legislation, it, it, all these proposals. Uh, it can become legislation or it could even uh, lead to, to uh, a treaty change. But we didn't start a discussion in the conference uh, with the question, do we need to change the treaties or not? Because, in fact, to change the treaties, that is a secondary question that, f that is the consequence of, of what you want. Uh, if you want to, to do a number of policies, to want to change Europe, uh, and you agree on that, then the second question comes, uh, how to achieve it? 
And if it is necessary for that to change the treaties, we need to do it. If it is not necessary to change the treaties to achieve that goal, we don't mm -hmm. need to do it. So, but that's the question that comes after the conference. It's not good. We, what, what we didn't want to do is to start a conference with yeah, an ideological principle discussion about treaty change, not treaty change, and, and, and nobody will discuss mm -hmm. really uh, the content of the European Union because we are busy with that so question. This could be the foundation of further changes. That could Maybe. be. That could be. It depends completely on the outcome of the conference. That's why we need everybody to participate. And as we said, not only politicians, citizens at home, you at home, you can organize your own events, you can put up discussions together to make part of it. What do you think is the, one of the main topics that can make people really be interested? Because at the end, we're all affected, as I said, climate change and our pockets, economy. So we really believe that people should participate. What would you tell the citizens who are watching us at home to well, that, engage that, that, on, that, the, on the conference? Uh, that sovereignty today on the national level is a very, yeah, is a very, yeah, limited, uh, uh, a limited uh, thing. So we, we, sovereignty means that you have the uh, grip on your own life that you can decide on your own future. But uh, today, in the world of today, uh, that doesn't, uh, uh, is that cannot longer be organized on a national level. That needs to be organized on a continental level. We, ha we, we have to deal with, with the Chinese, we have to deal with the Americans, with the Russians and so on. If you want to deal with them and if you want to prevail, uh, let prevail our interest, we need to do it together. So, uh, well, the most important is that people understand that uh, national sovereignty has its limits. Uh, the best way uh, to achieve our goals and to defend their interests is to do it on a European scale, so a shared uh, uh, sovereignty. And therefore, it's necessary that people become in, more involved into European politics because more and more decisions will be taken on the European level, on the continental uh, scale, to defend our interests against the uh, Chinese, Americans, Russians, and so on. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, it's important that they engage in these uh, uh, debates on, 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 on European politics. Mm -hmm. Then we have obviously uh, our own interest on the conference on the future of Europe is that in a productive way everybody contributes to make a new EU, a European Union better. But what happens with those who don't want to have a European Union, that they are creating like a liberal states and we have issues in, in some countries yeah, that they want to, to destroy the whole project? Yeah, the, Can they take them into account somehow to see what they want? Well, look, my feeling is that most people, also people who are very critical towards the European Union, uh, love the European project as, as such. The problem is not Europe as project. The problem is how we translate it into reality. The, the, there is a lot of support for the European project still. In every, it's growing even. Yeah, if we Brexit, see Eurobarometer uh, yeah, or any Euro others, it yeah. goes up. So we, we see especially more, after Brexit. Uh, after Brexit, we see more and more people backing, in fact, the European project. But there is an enormous criticism by the citizens towards the way we translate that dream, that project, into reality, into mm -hmm. the European Union of today. And uh, that is, uh, that, that is about, so more, very critical voices will be heard in tr during the conference. So I'm very critical myself towards the European Union. I'm always saying that I'm maybe the most, uh, the first uh, Eurosceptic of, of, of all, because I don't believe that this European Union can survive the 21st century. Uh, but that said, um, what we try to collect is, uh, is, is not uh, negative voices who are, uh, want to destroy uh, Europe. What we want to collect is the, uh, yeah, the positive criticism. So uh, what are people, uh, what, uh, what do people want really? What they want to change uh, in Europe? How they want to change it? That is what we want to collect and to use this as the basis for a for our further reforms. Mm -hmm. Now we have a couple of questions of the citizens who are watching us live at the moment. One is Christine and she's asking for your opinion on why don't we have a European commissioner for internal affairs, like it exists a, a minister in most of the countries. Yeah, in, a, in a certain way you have that, eh? because there, are, there is a, a commissioner uh, responsible, for example, for migration, uh, uh, and a minister who is responsible uh, for everything what has to, uh, to do with uh, uh, police, police cooperation, and, 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 and so on. But it's true that we need a, a, a more clear uh, division of labor inside the commission in general. Eh? Mm -hmm. Now, there is, first of all, the question, uh, 
do we have not too much commissioners? And because we are with... Well, can we elect a president, maybe? Yeah, well, we have 27 for the moment, and we ha don't have portfolios of 27. I'm always thinking that instead of having an obese European Commission of 27, uh, where the, uh, the chair is not uh, elected directly or indirectly by the citizens, would it not be better to have a, a small European government uh, with the name government, with, for example, 12 or 15 ministers, and the head of that government yeah, is directly or indirectly, through the elections, uh, designated by the citizens, like it is the case in every country. Huh? Mm -hmm. Like it is the case in every country. That would be a, a better way uh, to do it. And uh, uh, I instead of have, uh, having the situation today. And one last question I have also for one of our citizens watching is from Clement. And he said, what is the most exciting proposal that citizens have put forward and that you're aware of? Oh, the most... And uh, anything that you recall that thought, that's a really great idea, we should go. Yeah, but I, I, the, 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 what I have felt until today as the most pressing uh, is, is something that I never expected. That is that the, the European citizens say, why are we going to start the European army? Because uh, the, what, a, uh, what a waste of money we are doing today uh, by d doing it 28 times. Mm -hmm. and so it, it's not maybe exciting, but it's absolutely necessary, I think, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to do so. But the citizens' panels are still running, huh? so we will only collect uh, their proposals in, the, in, in this plenary session, but in December and in January. Then the representatives of the citizens' panels will come and tell us what they want. And then it will be, uh, yeah, the, 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 give the possibility to the uh, uh, MEPs, uh, European Parliament, uh, national parliaments, uh, national governments, uh, to react to that. They will be obliged to react to that. Okay, that's good. Thank you so much for your time. You're a very busy person chairing the conference every few weekends here in Strasbourg. And for you at home, remember that, as we said, citizens can participate. And actually, if you go to engage.reneweurope.group.eu, you can participate and register to take part of one of the discussion tables that will take place in December in different places around Europe in your language. And you can take part. You will be heard. And Mr. Verhofstadt will hear your proposals as well. So thank you so much again for your time. And all of you, stay tuned because we still will be here. Tomorrow we have the plenary session right here in the hemicycle. And we will be giving you all the information that you need. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir.